Hi, welcome back to Monster Transmissions. Today we're going to demonstrate on how to replace the manual linkage in a 4L60E transmission. There are two different style linkages. The linkage style, you have a short linkage shaft, which is for a, without the neutral safety switch. And the one that we're showing right now, this has the neutral safety switch on the case. We're going to go through step by step on how to replace the shift linkage arm. It's very simple. Uh, you do, do not have to remove the valve body. You don't even have to remove the filter. You just have to drop the pan. So we're going to start with the outside of the transmission. Your original transmission had this neutral safety switch. And the unit that you received did not have it. It had the short linkage shaft in there which would not accept this. So we're going to demonstrate on how to remove the, link, the neutral safety switch and the linkage from this unit. First thing you want to do is remove the linkage nut. It's a 15 millimeter head. It's a 10 1.5 thread metric linkage nut. The linkage shaft have two flat lands, which will line up the flat lands on the linkage. So remember that this one happens to be facing down, the down position. Next you have the actual harness. For demonstration purposes, we show you here the harness where it's still connected to the neutral safety switch. GM used to create a watertight seal to add this rubber silicone to these connectors. After years of being in the vehicle, it's very difficult to remove the harness from the neutral switch. And usually what happens, you break the switch trying to remove it. So we suggest that you Remove the clip and gently pry top and bottom and gently pry the switch out of the neutral switch. Remove the harness. Once you have one removed, you can do the same to the, to the bottom. You still see all the silicone, the glue is still there. Okay, it becomes very tough to remove that. If you cannot remove this, you're going to break the switch. You can still remove the linkage the neutral safety without removing the harness. It's a little more difficult, but you can do it. Use a 13 millimeter wrench. And you can actually wrench the bolt from behind. And once you get the bolt loose, you can simply turn that bolt to remove it from inside. And you can still have the harness connected. Okay? If that way you will not break your neutral switch. Once this bolt is loose enough to remove. Then you can remove the bolt in the front. 13 millimeter head. You basically remove both of these bolts off of the case. Now you slide it down the shaft to remove it. And again, you can leave the bolt inside the switch. That way you don't have to remove this harness to get to it. You notice that on the front of the neutral switch has a slot. It's not just a hole, it's a slot. The same thing here where this bolt goes. There's a slot here. That's so when you install the switch, you can rotate it to make sure it's in park, and it reads in park, and that's why it's called a neutral switch. So to make sure the, park, the vehicle's in park or neutral for starting the vehicle. You set this switch here. To remove this linkage shaft, you know it's much longer than the factory shaft. The factory shaft would barely stick out of the case. So what you have to do is roll the unit over and remove the 16 pan bolts around the bottom of the pan. It's a 13 millimeter socket. Now I suggest you do this if you have to switch the linkage between your original transmission and the new monster transmission, I suggest you work on your original unit first so you're familiar with how to remove the linkage before you open up the monster transmission to install the shift lever linkage. Once the pan is removed, all the bolts are removed, You have the pan gasket, 
If this is installed in a vehicle, obviously this will be upside down, but it's easier to work on a bench. I would suggest n noticing that first. Save your gasket. Now this is the area that we're going to be working on. There's only three components to remove to take this shaft out. You do not have to touch any of the bolts or harnesses, anything on the valve body. First bolt to remove is this tensioner, which rides on the rooster part of the linkage, the manual shift lever linkage. You want to remove this tensioner bar. That's a 13 millimeter head bolt. It looks different, obviously. It doesn't have a washer bolt versus the pan bolt, so it is different. It's the same thread, same size. Once you remove that linkage, the next component you remove is the nut. It's a lock nut. It's actually threaded onto the shaft. To remove that nut, it's a 15 millimeter. 15 millimeter wrench. Move the linkage all the way forward to where this linkage shaft hits the ca casting of the case. Install the wrench and simply loosen that nut. You can loosen that all the way. Be careful not to drop it into the unit. When the linkage shaft is all the way down, it will hold it in place and will not drop into the transmission. The next item you need to remove is there is a large spacer clip, looks like a giant C-clip. It fits over the linkage assembly. You need to remove that linkage. I happen to have a pick has an angle on it. You simply put it underneath. You pull that clip up. And there's your support clip. That's what it looks like. Make sure that clip is out. Now you got to be careful not to drop that nut inside the transmission. Again, if it's upside down, it's just going to fall down. But this unit's laid back, it can fall inside. What we do is we install the pick into the nut and pull the linkage through the case. The linkage slides out of the case. And here's the nut. Very simple. For demonstration purposes, I'll show you on the linkage itself has two flat lands where it fits on to the two flat lands of the linkage here. The flat land on either side. This is where the nut would be. It go down and it would lock onto the linkage assembly. And again the factory shaft if it was installed so you can understand what it looks like. It basically barely slips through the case. First, the factory one sticks out a couple of inches. This is almost relatively flush to the casting of the case. So now we're going to install the correct linkage into your transmission and replace your factory neutral safety switch. This assembly will not fall out of the unit when it's on the bench, but if it's up in the air, the linkage assembly will want to tilt down towards the pan or towards the bottom of the case. Take that linkage out. We're going to install the neutral safety linkage in. Again, this mechanism will relatively stay in place, will not fall out, will not rotate on you. Just a very little bit. So you slide the linkage shaft through the case, through the seal on the side of the case. You can line up with the hole in the linkage. Before you push it all the way, you need to install the nut. Make sure that the slotted portion of the nut is facing the inside of the transmission. The way you can set this in there, just lay it in the pick, lay it in on the case. Now the linkage nut is inside the hole of the shaft and the shaft will actually go through and bottom out into the case. It has a land on it and there's a land surface here which will bottom out into the case. So this fit, shaft actually fits into the case. This is the stop. It will stop into the case. 
Once that's in, you can start your linkage nut. Pull the linkage to line up with the two flat lands on the linkage itself. And now you're going to rotate the linkage opposite. It was all the way on this side to loosen it. Now to tighten and push it all the way to this side. The other side of the linkage will bottom out in the case. That will be your stop. Okay. And now you tighten the nut. Once a, the nut is tight, ensure that you have nice smooth throw. You haven't bent the rod, the connecting rod, or bent the linkage itself by tightening the nut. Once that is, and the nut is installed, now you have to reinstall the spacer clip. When I suggest use a three quarter or 19 millimeter wrench, lay this clip over top of the shaft and then place the wrench over it and simply knock it down. It will lock onto the shaft. Doesn't matter what position it's basically in. It's basically a spacer to keep the linkage from floating up and down in the case. Once that is installed, your, the linkage has now been installed into the case. Again, we did not touch anything on the valve body besides the tensioner rod. We're now going to reinstall the linkage tensioner. It has a little L-shaped portion of the linkage shaft that will fit down into the casting of the valve body. You notice there's no threads there. This fits into that mechanism, the hole in the valve body. The roller portion fits onto the roller tabs on the manual linkage. So you depress the spring down so you install the bolt. The bolt head size, again, is 13 millimeter. It's an 8 millimeter, 1.25 thread. Same as the, the pan bolt for the transmission pan. Basically tighten that bolt down. You want to hand tighten this. Do not use an impact gun. You put this down to about 10 foot-pounds of torque if you're using a torque wrench. Okay. Now the linkage is all installed. You can test the operational linkage by reinstalling the manual linkage shaft. By putting it in that position, you're all the way in low gear. If you pull all the way up, the mechanism will push this shaft in the back, will push this mechanism into park. And that should lock your output shaft. You can test that by turning the output shaft. If it locks, then it's in park. So now the linkage ro rolls right across this linkage assembly. It's properly installed. Again, we did not even remove the filter. You reinstall the pan gasket. And basically reinstall the pan. You want to ensure that the pan gasket is lined up with the holes of the pan in the case. I recommend you start with the perimeter or the four corners of the pan the pan gasket. That will hold the gasket in place to install the balance of the pan bolts. To reinstall and tighten all of the pan bolts. Again, these will be tightened down to probably around 8 to 10 foot pounds. And if you're using a, pan, a cork pan gasket, it's normal for them to be retightened after you drive the car because the gasket will soak up some fluid and you have to retighten the pan gasket down. But do not over tighten. If you over tighten the pan gasket, it will split and cut the gasket and then you'll have a major leak. So now that all the bolts 
are there. We we'll use this to pull it down. And again, tighten them by hand. Whoops. Again, a very simple operation. It'll take no longer than 15 to 20 minutes to shift the, to change the shift linkage over. You roll the transmission back over. And after this is installed in the vehicle, you can reinstall the neutral safety switch. The neutral safety switch has two flat lands. Again, there's two flat lands on the, the shift linkage shaft. But it will line up, line your neutral switch up with the flat lands. Slide it down the shaft, and you reinstall the bolts. <laughs> now, if you put your linkage back together, and you go to start your car or truck and it does not start. There's two problems. Either the harness is not plugged in at all, sitting outside the harness, outside the neutral switch, or it's not pressed in all the way, or it just needs simple adjustment. You can pivot the, the neutral switch, so you have to have somebody holding the vehicle, put it in park, so it's in the park position, and set in the vehicle and try to start the car and you can rotate the switch until you until the vehicle will start once it starts and you can secure tighten down the two 13 millimeter bolts which will hold it in that clock position so now it will start every time and work off the neutral switch like it's supposed to so that's basically how you would replace the linkage on a 460E, again, it's very simple. The hardest part is basically dropping the pan. If you have any further questions, you call us at Monster Transmission, 1-800-708-0087.